I have a little time while I'm waiting for the frame to dry. I just did the KBS clean degreasing portion of their paint system. So while I have some time, thought I'd just go over what I've done to this frame over the last two months. So this frame is, it started out as a 1989 C30. So two wheel drive, one ton Chevy steak truck. Uh, I think it was about like a 155 inch wheelbase originally. Um, so I've had to do a lot of modifications to make it work for my Project Franken Square. So uh, I'll go over those. Start at the front. And since it was two wheel drive, had to add mounts for the front of the front springs. I originally used some stock mounts off of another frame. And with the way the rest of the frame turned out, I decided it didn't make sense to use stock ones. So I made my own out of some five inch square tube and four inch square tube, and then added a gusset. So those are all welded in. Uh, these are inspired by the ones that Off-Road Design makes, but theirs are $195. And it seemed like it made more sense for me to just make my own since I was able to. Uh, this is, both of these are cross members off of that four wheel drive frame. So those are stock, but as you can see, they are boxed in with some plates. The frame is fully boxed all the way to the back. Motor mount plates are stock. Uh, because the frame is boxed, I had to make some adjustments for the, uh, for the steering box mounting. So I had to add some tubes that went all the way through the frame. So it extended the bolts past where the frame is boxed. Those are made out of DOM. They're welded to the inside of the frame rail at the stock location. Got some Ford parts on the frame. These are shock mounts off of an OBS Ford F250, F350. They are actually Dorman brand and I modified them and then welded them to the frame to make them work. Um, the upper shackle hanger for the front spring. I also originally had a factory one in there, but uh, once I went to boxing the frame, I wasn't really going to be able to use the factory one. So I got the heavy duty bushings from Off-Road Design, made my own sleeve for the outside of it, welded the sleeve both inside and outside the frame rail. And then you can see on this side, it is boxed and then welded fully around there as well. Uh, the frame does neck in here to give the uh, appropriate clearance for the shackle. So that was a bit challenging, but it turned out pretty good. Still just have the factory body mounts on this. Um, added a strap to the bottom of the frame it's plug welded just like so this is inspired by the factory frame because for the one tons they put a strap here for extra reinforcement and even though i'm boxed which adds good reinforcement thought it made sense to not skimp so i added a strap plug welded it which would simulate the bolts that the factory uses and then of course you can see it's fully welded and both inside and outside This is the uh, transmission cross member mount. The cross member obviously is not installed at the moment, but it is fabricated. But that was a convenient location for hanging the frame when I, while I'm going to be painting it. Um, also incorporated some drains. If they can show up. Uh, some drains in the frame rail. So in case anything gets in there, that's the lowest point of the frame and it will eventually work its way out. I'm going to be spraying cavity wax inside the frame rails so that they won't rust from the inside out. And speaking of that, um, I have welded up pretty much all of the holes that weren't necessary on the outside of the frame. You can see witness marks. They showed up after the degreaser. Um, however, I did leave the large holes because they were trickier to fill, but also they're convenient locations for me to put the tube in 
for the cavity wax. So I just left them and I will just plug them with some um, plastic hole plugs so they won't be inviting a bunch of junk inside the frame, but it still gives me access inside there. A couple of holes up here as well. <clears throat> this is the transfer case cross member. I'm using a divorced NP202 transfer case out of an international truck. So uh, I needed to come up with a unique cross member for that. That's what I made. Should work out well. There's the factory mounts. Had to get interesting with the boxing under them. Um, this truck is going to have a dump flatbed on it. So I added these guides here so when the when the main beams for the bed drop, in case they're a little askew, this should get it back in line. Plus, as you're going down the road, I suppose it'd keep it from knocking back and or side to side too much. Added some brackets to the side just for future stuffs. I need to have a fuel tank on here. Uh, the hydraulic unit for the dump will be somewhere. So I just wanted to pre-plan since the frame is boxed, I don't have easy access to do mounting bolts. Um, I added these so I can easily drill and nut and bolt things to the side. I did that on both sides of the frame. Uh, just a cross member, just because it needed one. Another cross member, slightly different design. And then this cross member with the angle, that is the front mount for the dump hoist. So I have had the dump hoist in here. It's all planned out. So we've got that and then that block on either side, that's the rear mount for the dump hoist. But I skipped ahead a little bit because the frame changes right here. So uh, I wasn't happy with the factory rear frame because right around here, it not only kicks up, but it also gets shorter, not as tall. So it was going to complicate fabricating a bed. It was also going to make the bed taller, and this truck's going to be tall enough as it is, so I didn't want that. So I decided I would instead make the rear of the frame out of 3x8 steel tubing, and that's what you see here, quarter inch wall. And turned out pretty well. It's the first time extending frame rails. Probably overkilled it a little, but figured it was better safe than sorry. So you can see this line here. That is the end of the factory frame rail. And you'll see here there was an access hole. So I fully welded the inside. See a little heat mark here. Here, there's also one underneath. So fully welded on the inside. I popped holes at all those locations to plug weld. I don't know if you call that a plug weld, but fully welded there. Of course, uh, I made the seam diagonal so that I would have as much welding length as possible. So that's fully welded. And then what you can't see underneath is I did this on the bottom side as well. And then I made this strap that overlapped the intersection of the frame just for extra insurance. And that is plug welded as well as fully welded along the outside. Made my own leaf spring mounts out of square tubing and then added gussets to them. Again, things that you can buy if you want to, but this way I was able to make it exactly how I wanted and it really wasn't too much effort. So uh, I was happy with that decision. This pad is for the overload springs in the rear. I just cut them off the factory frame and welded them on. Another one. And then this is the rear spring mount. Slightly different design because uh, of the pivot for the bed that I built into the frame. If I had done the gusset this way, it would have started to get in my way. 
I didn't want to have one gusset down and one up. Just thought it'd look weird. So I did two gussets down and then a third one in the middle just for a little extra something, something. Probably overkill, but that's okay. Rather have overkill than underkill. So yeah, uh, this is going to be the hinge for the dump bed. I have an inch and a half pin here. The uh, main beam for the bed will be on top here and it'll pivot like that. And in the back, the hitch plate made out of half inch thick steel. Cut it with the plasma cutter. My Lotus plasma was rated for half inch, so I wasn't sure, but gave it a try and it worked. So that was cool. Um, got a hitch tube from Kurt, C-U-R-T. Used that. Um, I bent this up out of some half inch rod for hooking the chain on and then added two inch crossbar quarter inch wall and these wings here that the tube is attached to uh, that's actually cut from this plate so I reused the material there and uh, so that saved me a little money just using material I already had and it turned out pretty well so I think that's it um, got one more step to do in the KBS process and then it will dry overnight and tomorrow morning it starts getting paint. So it should really look like something after tomorrow. So that'll be cool. It's been a lot of work, but pretty gratifying and uh, exactly what I wanted. So I think that's pretty cool. All right, hope you enjoyed the tour. If you stuck around, watch the whole thing.